What's going on ladies and gents, Cerebro here for T3G and today I figured we'd uh, close out the year with something special. What I'd like to talk about today is data security. I know a lot of you are getting new computers for Christmas or you know your, your respective holidays and the big issue of data security comes into play. So you're getting a new computer, you're going to transfer your old data, what do you do with your old hard drive? How do you ensure that your data is going to stay secure? I'm going to show you how. Now here in front of me I've got a few examples of hard drives. These are going to vary in size, uh, the capacity of them is really irrelevant. Uh, it's just going to change, maybe add a step or two depending on the size of the drive uh, as far as capacity, but the physical size is really the only difference. So these here are uh, standard notebook drives. They're two and a half inch. Uh, that's pretty much what they're designated as, and uh, they're going to vary in connectivity. If you have an older than, let's say, I would say probably around 2004, 2005, if you have you know something that old or older, uh, you may still have an IDE connection. And that's going to be pins, and uh, hopefully we'll have a little macro shot of that up. And uh, the, the pins are going to actually be very fragile, so if you've ever dealt with this before, these can get bent and prevent you from accessing your data. Uh, so that's one way to do that. Now, we've got our trusty tools here. Now, the first thing I always recommend is the easiest. Uh, the easiest is going to be to take this out and keep it. Um, keep it or destroy it. Now, as far as destroying it, you've got a few options, and I'm going to go through those. Uh, the easiest method of preventing simple access is to remove this board. Without this board back here, the actual data that's stored on this cannot be accessed uh, to most people. So what we're gonna do is we've got a small Phillips head here. All right, so now that I've got the screw undone here, uh, as I was saying, you, you don't have to worry about scratching the board here. The whole purpose is uh, to prevent somebody from, from somebody from getting access to your data. So this is gonna be the easiest method, as I said, to once you get the screws off. Uh, and of course, uh, if you don't want it to be, you don't have to, if you don't wanna worry about it, you can just yank it off, uh, but this is going to be kind of the cleanest method. Um, this is an older drive, so this is particularly difficult. The screws are really in there. And, uh, all right. So what you're going to end up with is this board. Now, this is where your data is. You, there are plates in here. The mechanical drives have multi, one, to, one to three or one to five, depending on the drive, uh, plates that are in here that are going to have your data. This is what allows somebody with a computer and kind of the easy way to access your data. So if you take one of these and do that, you have incapacitated the ability for somebody to easily get access to this information. Got my recycling pile over here. Now, as I said, that is the easy way to do that. And I've already done that on, I've already unscrewed these. These were much easier. <laughs> um, and of course you wanna make sure that you recycle your electronic components. Um, so you wanna take these, snap them. I mean, really just any kind of damage to them is going to make them pretty unusable um, to anyone but the most expert of uh, electronics gurus. Now the reason that's true is that these have a tiny control chip on them and that identifies this particular drive to this particular board. So for instance this is an older uh, IDE interface hard drive. Let's see here yank this off and I like to keep the screws just in case I need them um, they might not even end up in electronics you know maybe in a home improvement project of some sort but I'm just not one to throw away good screws because sometimes they're hard to find okay that's that again so these if you notice these actually connected with tiny pins here this one is going to go ahead and connect with the ribbon cable. Uh, like I said, this is an older one, so this actually has some connectivity that's more traditional, I guess. And I did still have some pin connections down here, 
Um, so that was a ZIF interface, a zero inter insertion force interface that, that just sl snapped on and without any actual effort. Um, so this has, let's see here, I would wager, so is this a Samsung drive? Yes, this is a Samsung drive. So it's one of these two Samsung chips on here. Now each board, every circuit board is going to have multiple chips by, by multiple manufacturers and they're going to have different features and purposes. Because this is a Samsung drive, I'm going to wager that one of these two chips is the actual control chip. And I'm going to say it is likely A219. Hmm. It might be the larger chip. If it's not, it's a smaller chip, but I mean, that, this chip, this singular chip is what identifies this to this. Now, are there, let's see, what is this, a 60 gig. So are there 60 gig IDE drives? Yes, by multiple manufacturers, by, you know, made in different years, all that kind of stuff. Even by Samsung having a different year model or even a different series model. It could have been made, you know, this was a 20, 2002. So this is a, a May 2002 model, it says 2002 05. Um, this chip identifies this as a 2002 05 model Samsung or 60 gig drive. If you don't have this exact chip, you cannot get this to spin up in a computer traditionally with this board. So even if you were to yank this chip off and leave the board there, they would have to have this exact chip to be able to run this board. So that's kind of the biggest thing. And I always, like I said, for security purposes, if you're going to do it, you break the boards. These are a little older. And I don't want to cut myself. Some of these pliers. <laughs> and even the smallest component being broken, um, this is a very interdependent system. So if you break even the smallest piece of it, it's it's not usable anymore. So that is why that's kind of the easiest and fastest method. Now, if you are not your garden variety uh, computer hacker, I guess you would say, uh, you might have access to a large clean room where you have the proper tools to read the plates on this. And that is accessed by removing the top. And this is where it gets dangerous, this is why you shouldn't do this if you have not uh, cleaned everything. If you don't have a sterile environment, you shouldn't open this if you want to be able to access your data. Uh, these are that's that's how they do data retrievals. If you end up sending your drive out for data retrieval, they, they pop this open. Uh, they yank out the plates in a clean room with a robot arm and throw inside a device that will read it. Um, so this is actually I took the screws off the top already here. So the easy way to do this would be just to, to break this. If you have a, a metal shredder, uh, that's obviously going to be the most secure. Uh, from what I've seen, that's where if you take this to an electro, a, you know a reputable electronics recycler, that's what they that's what they do the least most of the time. They throw it in a big uh, metal and plastic, uh, just kind of like a wood chipper, but for metal, um, and it just shreds the whole thing, and then it's completely unusable. The 100% most secure way to do it, obviously acid. If you have access to something that will uh, destroy this uh, in terms of acid, that is legal, of course. Uh, you know, definitely that's gonna be the most secure way. But uh, the next best thing would be to shred it. The, the, the smaller the pieces, the harder it's going to be to retrieve. Um, larger pieces are going to be, uh, larger pieces of the plate. And again, the, the shell here is not relevant. Let's see, do I have one of these that's openable? not stuck there we go so this had six six screws on top I took those off we're gonna yank this bad boy does it have a middle screw that I forgot so seven screws sometimes they're under the sticker so this is irrelevant it's just metal and this is where the magic happens. And the only way to truly protect your data is to destroy these plates. Now, you have multiple ways of doing that. I'm going to remove this.
Also irrelevant. Nothing on here has any information. This is all recyclable. This is your data. Blows the mind. Right here, these two little plates, anywhere from these days, anywhere up to a, a terabyte. You know, two plates, I think three plates is a terabyte. Um, but they're been getting better and better at making the, the, the magnetic lines smaller and smaller. And that's where you're getting hard, larger hard drives in the same physical size. Um, this is what you need to destroy. As I said, acid shredding is going to be the best because this right here, even as I'm holding it with my hands and oils and stuff that's damaging the plates, uh, this is still this can still be accessed. Someone can take this into a clean room, put it on the proper device, and uh, you know once they've cleaned it off properly, and they can get this spun up and most likely 100% retrieved. Often that's what happens when you send these in to get recycled, or not recycled, to get them uh, recovered. So you know you have a catastrophic loss of data, you don't have a backup, and you send your hard drive in to be recovered. This is what happens. They take these out, throw it on a robot arm, it throws it in a computer that has the right reader for this specific hardware, and it reads these plates. They're basically like CDs, they're just really, really tiny. And uh, this is what you're gonna wanna shred not through a regular shredder these are these are much sturdier than standard cds uh but if you have a metal shredder uh or i mean i don't know that a wood chipper would do it but if you have something along the lines of a wood chipper that's strong enough for this uh, or if you have you know an industrial grade shredder uh this is this is definitely the way to do that now if you don't want to go through the trouble of opening it up getting these out and you just want something that's fairly secure you know, let's say 40% to 60% secure. Um, Cause you gotta, you gotta remember, you know, as much as we all want to be, um, none of these are drill heads. Well, anyway, I don't have my drill head, but this is the only way that will, that will allow you to do damage to the plates without actually opening it up, unless you're gonna throw the whole thing into a vat of acid, which like I said, if you have access to that, go for it. Um, I do not, uh, I'm, I'm gonna end up shredding these plates, um, but the other way to do it would be to take the drill to it and drill holes in this. Now make sure you use the right bits. This is metal, it is metal inside, and this is heavy uh, composite steel, I think actually is what the, the actual kind of box frame is. Um, so it's really sturdy. Uh, so definitely make sure you use the right bits for that. They're not very, they're not flimsy. Um, but the only other thing I can think of is uh, if you set these up as targets and paint little uh, little enemy symbols on them, you know, you paint the, the Sith or whatever you want to do and use them for target practice. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, that's really it. Those are kind of the main methods of, of securing your data uh, once you've moved on to a new device and you want to make sure that your old data is secure. Uh, so you want to make sure you take off the plate on the bottom. You want to make sure that you somehow damage this, or uh, if you have that ability, uh, shred or or uh, liquefy the plates inside here. That uh, that will definitely secure your data, and you will not have to worry about it anymore. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys know any other methods that might be a little easier uh, than, uh, than actually tearing things apart, definitely let me know in the comments below. Uh, I've been Cerebro for T3G. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, make sure you like, subscribe. We still have our winter contest going on through the end of January, so make sure you check out that MSI 970 video annotation, <laughs> and uh, you know, fill that out, and uh, check out Instagram and Facebook. Uh, New Year's Eve something coming up for you guys uh, very very special I've had no response from people from a couple other contests and uh, I'm gonna be doing a quick giveaway on Instagram and Facebook so make sure you guys check that out until then Cerebro for T3G signing off so the easy way to do this would be just to oh, 